Okay, there we go. Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning, Monday morning streamage. Thanks everybody for being here. So, um, I already talked to everybody. Hopefully said good morning to everybody I saw in chat. Thanks everybody for being here. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is a live recording with a live, mostly live audience. <laughs> We have a live chat going on during these shows, and uh, they're not edited. They're just uploaded directly to YouTube as soon as the show's over. And uh, so thanks for watching over on YouTube on the recordings, and thanks to everybody for being here in the live chat Monday morning. So I think what I'm going to do uh, today is I get so many questions on the kind of products I use in uh, just different things, especially, though, in color books. Like, here's the one we worked on last week. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is go and talk a little bit about uh, some of the products that I use for coloring, color books and, and other things, you know. So because I get so many questions on them and then that way I'll have a video directing you to, you know, to direct you to on a lot of the products that I use. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm, uh, nobody's paying me to talk about any of these products. They're just products that I use that I like, uh, and not saying I'll never change anything. I always add new things like my, uh, watercolor markers that Eileen sent me, things like that. So, but I will try, try to talk about some of the products and if y'all have any questions in the chat, just put it in caps so I know you're talking to me and not just chat rolling by. So first off, let me just talk about, what I pulled out two color books here. I pulled out my Anamorphia and my Imagimorphia because these are two that I've worked in recently. This one we did a video on last week. And um, so I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about some of the things that I do. Uh, for instance, the first thing I usually do in a color book page, and this is just my technique. It's not like the you know, end all be all technique. It's just how I do color book pages. Because I do commission portraits, uh, people and pet portraits, I don't want to spend days and weeks on a color book page, although there's nothing wrong with that. If you have the time or the inclination to spend many hours on a page, there's nothing wrong with that. And I have spent many hours on a few pages and done classes. Well, I don't know if you call them classes, but demos and show how I um, how I've done them. But for the most part, I don't spend days and weeks. Uh, Carrie, do you? find a magic um, uh, anamorphy it's a bit harder now I haven't noticed a difference I'm not saying there's not one Carrie but I haven't noticed she's asking if I've noticed a difference in blending um, it, it, between these two I've not noticed it uh, uh, you know I just haven't so uh, anyway what I want to show you is how I usually start out and the products I use for starting a color book page uh, <laughs> I have had some odd comments sometimes because people don't have only watched maybe a couple of videos or haven't watched enough to see that when I'm doing a wash that that's just a base it's not my full color book you know how I color a page so I think sometimes when people just see me do a wash on the uh, say an animal or paint a background they're going well you know what because <laughs> they haven't you know they'll stick around for the whole shading process so I'm going to just like, let's just use this for an example. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about the colors that I use, I mean, uh, the products I use as I do a little bit of demoing. I'm not going to do a full on page right now, might do that later. So the, the paint that I use to do washes, and by wash, I just mean watered down acrylic paint. And the acrylic paint I use is just Americana craft paint, okay? It's Americana craft paint, and it's, it's just a matte craft paint. It's not the satin, it's not the gloss, There's, and it's not the uh, artist grade in like in the tubes, you know, like a golden or a Liquitex or a, you know, a, one of the artist grade paints, uh, acrylic paints are in a tube. They're, they seem to have a, a binder or a sheen to them. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but for, to color over a um, acrylic wash, I found that a matte craft paint uh, it allows you gives the page a little bit of tooth but completely you can completely go over it with pen, color pencil 
I've shown you how I've taken black paint and black color pencil, solid black on both, and how you can't get back a white on top of a black color pencil, no matter how hard you scrub on it. But with the black acrylic paint, you can just take a white pencil and lightly go over and you've got white right back. So, um, and the other thing, the pencils that I use are, let me get a, where's a lighter black right here. The color pencils I use are Prismacolor, Prismacolor Premier, although I do have some of the older ones like uh, Barrel and Sanford, but now they, they're called uh, Prismacolor Premier. And uh, that's pretty much the only color pencil I use. I have a few other brands, some Polychromos and the Luminance and a few of other colors. But I don't have enough uh, to really talk about how well they work or don't work because I'm so used to using Prismacolors for years and years and years and years because this is what I use to do my color pencil portraits. So that's also what I use in my color book. So, so let me just show you here a little bit. I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit. This is called Oxblood. It's kind of um, a little bit on the red side uh, of Sienna. And what I do is I just take a paintbrush. Let me grab one here. And I just wet my brush. Just get it damp here and uh, before I put it in paint. And now there's a couple things you can do. You can either just wet your brush and pull off some paint into the wet, you know, into the water. Or if you're going to be doing a large area, you know, just take a water spray bottle and wet it down like this. And then just get it wet. Now what you want to do is you want to keep it very translucent and very thin. Because if you're going to go over a color book page, you don't want to lose all those lines. Right? Let me, let me go ahead and zoom in one. Here because I think we can get just a little closer. Hang on, let me refocus the camera close. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, so here we go. So you want to keep it very translucent. And what I do is I'll just put a full on wash and even not even worrying about the background because I know what I'm going to do is paint the background. So it doesn't matter if I get out of, out of lines. But I'm just going to put a wash, need a little bit more water here, a wash of acrylic paint over the whole thing. And his fur goes into all these other areas. I can just pull that in too. Okay. And it's so it's translucent enough that you can see see your um, color book pages behind it or the color book lines behind it. So I'm just going to do a full on wash over everything, knowing that um, I can do this because I know that color pencil will go over anything. Okay, color pencil. So like I'm going over some of these little creatures here water some more down. I'm going over some of the little creatures and things here. That's fine because I know I can just color pencil or paint or marker over the top of that. All right, so you can see how lightly I'm doing this. Uh, a couple of tips. If you want this darker, if you want some, say, a little bit darker fur in spots, you need to, in a color book, paint, most color books are not real thick. They're thin and I have found that the acrylic paint, my Americana washes, have never gone through uh, to the other side. Unless I sop and wet it, get it so sop and wet that the water is literally, you know, tearing the paper. So if you're going to add more layers to this, you want to dry it or wait for it dry. I have a heat gun. I just dry it. And you want to make sure it's really, really dry, not just for a, not just for another layer of paint or another wash, but especially before you go in here with color pencils. You want to make sure it's a hundred percent dry before you go in here with color pencils, because if you don't, the paper's just going to peel up or you're just going to tear right through. Hey, Leah, anybody else popping in? All right, so now if I just want to add a little bit more of a wash just a little darker, say in some of the fur areas, it's dry there so I can add another layer. Okay, so I just want you to kind of see how I um, approach the acrylic wash. 
because I always get people asking me about does it go through does it uh, how do you see the lines it's because I'm doing very thin washes okay very thin washes so I just wanted to do this little bit to show you how that works so uh, and the, again you want to make sure it's dry before you go in there with color pencil and start doing shading Okay, I know he has a cute face, doesn't he, Eileen? All right, so let me go ahead and dry this real quick so that when I close the book, this paint doesn't transfer over there because it's wet. The other thing that people ask is does it wrinkle? And that the wrinkling and the buckling of the paper with the water will depend on how thick your color book pages are every color book paper are um, every color book page you use is different so you always want to have a back page where you can um, test test your pencils your pens your markers your paint how much water you can add always have a test page in every book because every page is different okay every color book is different the thickness and whatnot of your paper um, so yeah so that was just using this one's called oxblood it's Americana again I use Americana paints uh, really almost exclusively I mean I might have the off-brand here or there but and they're not sponsoring me no one's paying me to say this I just like Americana I like the colors I like the coverage I like everything about them so uh, that's just the the brand that I prefer also they it is a matte again it's not the there, there are deco art satins and glosses D the pencil will not go over the same with gloss and satin paint you have to you know have a matte paint whether it's Americana or whatever you want but always test it so that's the the paints I use and that's what a wash is for me okay it's just a wash of watered down acrylic paint okay and again the color pencils that I use are Americana I mean Americana Prismacolor Premier all right that's just uh, the the new you know that's what they call themselves now they've gone from barrel to Sanford to Premier uh, and but it's Prismacolor okay and that's what I use to go in and shade it's also what I use uh, for color my color pencil portraits is um, is a uh, Prismacolor all right so I think that covers the paint and the con the brand of pencil again right now if you're just coming in this is a live chat if you're watching on uh, YouTube it's a live chat on Ustream and I'm talking live people answering questions and talking to people so um, <clears throat> <laughs> you wait for me to go test the color books. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So anyway, you're funny, Terry. So anyway, uh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this little segment here on the products and some of the techniques I use because I get the same questions all the time. Like every day, I get a message or an email asking me what paint I use, and I understand that if I if I color in a color book and I happen to not mention it, then people that will be the one video that people will see and say, "What is it?" Well, if I if I make this video, I can direct you, you know everybody to the products and some of the techniques I use okay so that is uh, some of the paint and the wash and the pencils that I use all right so then we did this last uh, week so I did this little bit of a demo showing some different things that we use um, oh let me just show one more thing in here let me go back to this uh, it's a good one to do a demo on the other thing that I want to talk about using acrylic paints is when I do a background when I paint the background of a color book page um, it's not watered down okay now here I've done some shading with color pencil on top of an orange right now um, I'm not sure what color background I want this to be a lot of times I like black but I have in this one I've done many many different colors I probably don't need to show that I can just tell it uh, <clears throat> many colors in here just to test out different background colors I'm trying to really I would love to finish this whole Imagimorphia uh, color book eventually. So I just do different colors in the background. Here's one with the black in the background. 
and it is a little flashed out guys let me kind of if i tilt it forward you can see what it really looks like a little well it's still got a little bit of a shine to it but i think you get the idea um i'll just paint a flat color in the back with uh, whatever color i don't even remember which one this was it might have been prussian blue i don't remember the background could have been midnight blue but um the background is not watered down so when I paint a background and I just want a flat, matte color background that I can go over with color pencil. See the color pencil here? And then I have also splattered stars. But the color pencil on top of the acrylic paint just works like magic. It just is awesome. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So the background color is flat. Now, if you're using certain colors like uh, some yellows, uh, lime greens, uh, some reds, they're a little more translucent than other colors. So you may have to put two coats. Uh, you might, you know, it won't be a flat matted color with some colors because they're just more translucent than others. And if you want that nice flat uh, matte opaque background you might have to put a couple of coats and that's going to depend on the color and the brand of the paint so again test it on you know have a page have a page in the back where you can test things um, or the content page whatever just have something that you can test because again every color book and um, do you use the paint near the little bits okay that's a good question, Laurel. So sometimes it depends on <laughs> how uh, quickly I'm trying to get it done or not. Um, you can paint right up to the edge, but if you feel like your uh, painting skills are not good enough to get tiny, even with a tiny brush, get right up inside little areas, then I would try to, I would be aware of what color you are going to paint, I mean, uh, pencil around it. If you have, like, for instance, if it's black, uh, you know, if you do a black background, obviously you can take a pencil and get right up in there with the black. But if you're doing it some kind of specialty color, like, um, well, let's just go back to this. Uh, if you're doing um, the background like this midnight blue and you didn't have that exact color pencil, it's going to show. So in this case, I wanted a lighter color blue. I wanted to make like a glow kind of around the watered area. So I knew what I, going into it that I was going to do that, okay? Uh, even if you don't know you're going to do that, if you don't have the exact color, you could do that on purpose. You can put like a glow or another, you know, uh, co complementary color or even a contrasting color because your pencils will go over the flat matte pencil. Okay, hey Pam. So it depends on how much time you want to take. Um, if you want to get in there with every little bit, like I knew that this was going to be the lighter color, so I just penciled all the rest of that in. But if you want all that background, those little bitty bits, with the same background color, you're going to either have to get in there with a brush or a pencil or something at least kind of close to the color. Yeah, yeah. So if that's going to that's going to matter. The paint and your pencil. You you're going to have to know. Do I have that exact color pencil? And you probably won't have an exact color pencil. You know, and depending on how much difference there is between your background and the color pencils that you have, you'll have to work with that. Or you'll just have to have a tiny little brush and paint in there. Get in there with a tiny brush. It, it, just like you would with a tiny, with a pencil or a marker or a gel pen. And speaking of which, let's go back to the castle here. If you were watching last week, I was trying to use all different kinds of things on this page to show some of the uh, different uh, products that I use in a color book page. So after we did the uh, wash of the castle, here you can see it's mo mostly just the wash. Then I went in here and started shading with a couple of colors of uh, color pencil. And I don't, I don't use um, 
20 shades of whatever color I'm doing on a color book page, unless maybe it's a face or something special or a, a large image with a lot of, uh, you know, big imagery of clothing or something where I'm going to need more shades of color. But when I'm doing something this small, I'll usually stick to two or three colors in something this small to shade with, you know, have a, a light, like maybe I might have a white, a dark, a purple and a light purple maybe one other color like I use some blue blue in here but um, I don't use you know 20 different colors to shade like a, this small of an area uh, but you know you can use as many as you want or as long as take as long as you want a lot of times when I'm doing color book pages I, I'm if it's not going to be a multi-part um, color book demo then you know, it's a, it's can seem a little rushed, um, and you know because I'm trying to get as many techniques in there as I can, or show you as many ways that I can do I do things so that you can take your time and do more different ideas. So then, what I did is I took my darkest and started shading on the sides here, and then I kind of blended it out with the lighter lilac color, and then what I did is went in with a uh, marker. All right, so now let me talk a little bit about the markers I use uh, <clears throat> in a color book, okay? I don't use Copics or any alcohol-based markers. They will go through. I've never found a color book that they wouldn't go through. Maybe the specialty, There's, I think there's one or two heavy watercolor paper specialty expensive color books that, that it may not go through. But let's just say in general... <laughs> Alcohol-based markers will go through your color book pages. Now, if it's not a double-sided, if you know, like these are all, you know, you got pictures on both sides. If it's a single-sided page and you don't care if it, it bleeds through to the other side because there's nothing there, just remember to put something between it, a cardstock or whatever. Put that between your, your pages or, like I do most of the time, I'll just tear them out and I, then I put them in a binder if, they, if they're not a continuous story type thing. Um, and then you don't care if the markers or whatever go through because it's a one-sided page. And uh, so if you want to use alcohol-based markers in that case, or if you like, let's say you really love this page and you want it to be in Copics or whatever, you know, make your own personal copy. I'm not saying copy it for any other reason than just your own personal Copic use or whatever. Um, it's just that I don't use alcohol-based markers really at all for anything um, because I, I'm so, uh, I use my color pencils and acrylic paint. Okay, so anyway, when I'm using any kind of markers that I do use are just the cheap Crayola Super Tip Kids markers. They're called Super Tips, and in, essentially they're a bullet tip. Okay, so they look like this, and what's nice about them is you can get a, a thick line, a medium line, and even up to a thin line, depending on how you tilt the marker, right, you know, because it's a Super Tip. Um, can the acrylic paint cover up bleed through? Not unless it's soaking wet. What causes acrylic paint to go through another side is the, all the water. It's the water that's breaking down your page. So if you do, like I showed you on that box, do one coat thin, dry it completely before you put another layer on. As long as it's dry, it's not going to tear your paper. Because what is happening if your acrylic paint is going through, it's because you got so much water that you have wet the page down to the point of turning it into pulp. And that will water will eventually go through. So you've got to dry it if you want to layer up your acrylics. You have to dry in between so you're not pulping up your paper. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so then what I'll do, or what you can do, I don't do this on every page, but I want to, I'm just trying to show you all the different kind of materials I use and some of my techniques. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm getting in, I get asked, you know, I'll get in the teacher mode. I'm not a, you know, I tell you guys, I'm not a teacher, but I get the teacher vo voice when I start describing things. So I sound real serious, but it's, it's all good. It's all fun, guys.
<laughs> I just don't want to miss telling you anything. Okay, so then what I did on this particular page is I took my marker, let me get up here close, and I just I just went in here and did a few a few little bricks on you know to kind of shade it a little bit more and then just add essence of bricks. I didn't whoops. I didn't paint every single brick in there. And you can if you want, you know, you can go in there and shade and paint every single brick. But what I did is I just kind of did a few so that you can tell it's brick. See how I'm working it there compared to that. See? Okay, so you can get in there and do that. Now, about these markers, there are different brands of markers out there that are watercolor and water based. The Kids Crayola Super Tip markers are water based. It's not like these that Eileen sent me here. It's not like these. These are the Kurataki or Zig. They're they're combining, you know, they're they work together, Zig and Kurataki, to make the clean color real brush watercolor markers. These not only have a real brush, it's a real brush there with individual hairs, okay, but it's actual watercolor in these markers. This is not watercolor in here. This is just watered down whatever, you know, which works great on top of your color pencil. And you got to make sure it's dry though. I didn't stress that. When I do these little bricks like this, let's just say I did a brick like that right now. I can smear it. Okay, it'll smear. You want to, you know, you want to let it sit for just a couple of seconds to make sure it's dry. These are actual watercolors. These are not refillable. Neither are these. But these are real watercolors and will blend like a watercolor. You can treat this just like watercolor on the tip of a brush and, and it'll blend. It'll, you know, do a lot of things. Now, the thing with these, if you're doing your color book pages, these are expensive. I do not use these in my color books unless it's a special thing. I've done a couple demos with these, and I've done a couple nice color book pages and given them away with these, but these are expensive. If you're going to start using these in color books, it's going to get expensive, okay? I would recommend if you want to do any kind of watercoloring in your books and again you want to test because not every book is conducive some you can put more water than others there's a couple that are more made for watercolors like uh, let me grab one <coughs> like these island escape ones hang on guys I froze for just a second uh, these have um, these have a thicker almost watercolor type paper in them okay so they're a little bit more conducive to water coloring but you have to really test very few color books are going to hold up to a lot of water coloring like uh like you would do a watercolor painting okay you you need to and you need to dry if you start doing a lot of mixing if you start mixing like you wanted a green and you got you got your blue and your yellow here and you're just lots of lots of water and lots of paint, you know, it's going to it's going to go through and it's going to peel your paper. What I mean by it is like turn it into pulp. OK, so you really need to test any kind of whether it's just water coloring. I know Bunny uh, does watercolor in her books, but if you notice how little water she's using and tiny spaces so it's kind of drying as she goes she doesn't have a lot of you know she doesn't just wet the paper down and do a wet on wet technique in a color book it's just not going to work guys you're, you're going to be upset with yourself if you try to do like a big wet on wet technique in a color book and your paper just melts you know know what i mean Vern? <laughs> so in my color books for the most part unless it's a special page um, then I'll use the zig ones uh, I just use these I just use the kids markers you can get a pack of 50 of these for they're $9.99 at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and if you use a coupon a 40 or 50 percent off coupon and even on Amazon you can probably even get them cheaper there I just buy them at the craft stores you can get them for five to six dollars for fifty, and I uh, trust me, these last forever. I think I've only I've got three sets that I bought over the years, 
and I think I've only run out of a couple. <laughs> they they last forever. Um, so Camille, Cam, Camille says that she uses her zigs in the Colin Thompson book. Yeah, yeah, you can use them. I'm not saying you can't use them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying, but they get expensive. These are very expensive if you're going to be coloring a lot with these, okay? And if you can afford it and love these, go for it, you know? But again, it's you don't just wet down a whole page and do a wet in wet technique where your paper is sopping wet. That's going to, you know, that's not going to hold up. Yeah, it's not going to hold up. But these, or, you know, I've done full on, I've done a few full on color book pages with these, like the, uh, in the fashion, the Suwa fashion book, or the look book, it's called Look. Uh, I did one for uh, Paula and I did one for uh, Eileen using these, the whole outfit, okay? But I also made sure to keep it dry in between the layers, okay? Oh, these don't last if you don't put the, um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't put the lids back on. Well, that may be true, Carrie. <laughs> okay, so that's some of the markers and the pencils. Now, for the tiny little areas in here, I have this, I uh, gifted this set of gel pens, but I can't recommend any certain kind of gel pens. I don't use them a lot except for the tiniest little areas. So, like, let's just say, um, let me say I, I want to do some maybe blue stars. Let me get a glitter one here. So, this is a glitter one. The only time I really use the gel pens, <coughs> and a lot of people swear by the gel pens. They love their gel pens. They love the tiny, tiny little bits with the gel pens. Um, you know, I just usually get in most areas with pencil. But sometimes there's such tiny little areas. Now, these stars are not really too tiny for a... Um, pencil but I'm just going to do a little show here with the gel pen so you can get in here with the gel pen and get in those tiny little bits especially in some books like this one Kirby Roseanne's um, Imagimorphia and Anamorphia you know and then this one's uh, got a glitter to it you probably won't be able to see it but it has some glitter to it so I would you know get in here with uh some of the tiny, tiny areas with the gel pen because it's just easy to get in there. I'm not going to shade that. I'm not going to blend that. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to have flat blue stars. So I would just, you know, go through here and find all the stars. This is just how I'm, you know, attacking this particular page. Uh, I have done a demo on here uh, last week. Like, for instance, these fires here. All these... Um, uh, Kirby Roseanne's books have these wavy things on all the pages. It's kind of like he, how he blends everything together with all his little creatures and whatever else is going on. And somebody asked me last week, how, how do you color that? Well, I will, it depends on what I'm going to do. In this case, I'm making a fiery castle. So I made all the little water, water bits to look like fire. Okay, and how I sh showed that is I started just by doing a base coat of just, a, um, you know, found all the fire in there, all the orange, and just did a nice light coat with that. Then I went back in with uh, a red and a yellow marker, the, the markers, and just kind of put some yellow and, and um, red in there. And then I blended back again with the uh, pencil to make it kind of look like fire. So I just went through the whole thing and found them all. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but, but gel pens are excellent. If you don't want to have a nice sharp pencil to get in there, you can use, or even say some of these little tiny dots in there. Well, I know I can't, I'm not going to be able to focus that closely with the, the settings I have right now on the camera, but. There's like might be little tiny dots or little bitty areas. Gel pens are excellent for that, okay, to get in there. And you can get shiny ones. You can get glitter ones, you know, all, you know, um, neon color ones. There's all col kinds of colors of gel pens that are fun to get in all those little areas. Now, speaking of glitter, this is a glitter one, and y'all can't really see it, but, you know, I can tell that it's glitter. But in some of my uh, color book pages, I like to add glitter. 
Um, let me go over here to Animorph. No, is it in this one? No, it's in this one. Where I did the spider web here. So this will show this glitter because it's a lot. Okay. See all the glitter there on the spider web? Um, I do these large areas of glitter, or if I want, like, let's say I wanted to glitter the whole castle, I'll use stickles. All right. So this is the glitter that I use. I like it because it's it, the glue and the glitter are, are very um, together. You're not going to get little flakes of glitter anywhere. Okay, it, it just stays where you put it. And uh, there's many, many colors of these. I, I would recommend if you don't want to buy all kinds of colors of stickles, get the diamond. The diamond is like glittery and clear. So whatever you go over, like let's just say I go into these windows. This one might almost actually be empty. Um, all right, here we go. Let's just say I wanted to put, I wanted to have um, shiny, wind, uh, glittery windows. I probably shouldn't be doing this because then I can't do anything else in this book while it's wet. It does take a little bit to dry, but it, it, will, it won't change the color. See, it'll still be purple under there. See how it's still purple under the glitter? So you can use diamond stickles. You can use diamond stickles over any color, and it will be the color that's under it. Now, because I'm still working on many pages in here, I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off, and I'll re-glitter it later, okay? Because I don't. I, it, it takes a while to dry. So that's what I use for anything glitter. On the spider web, I use silver. I use silver stickles. Go back to it. Right, let's find it here. This was silver. Okay. And I know the lights wanting to flash out my color there a little bit, but yeah, so there. Okay, so let's see what else have I. Um, got to think about what I'm using. I'm trying to tell y'all, you know, every kind of product that I use in my color books or um, yeah, so let me just think for a second. Let me ask you guys if y'all have any questions real quick while I'm thinking of the next thing I wanted to address. Do y'all have any questions on any of this so far? But that's pretty much the main things that I use in color books. You know, the occasional gel pen for tiny areas, mostly acrylic paint, and again, I use the Americana, uh, for the washes, watered down, and the flat, not watered down, backgrounds, and color pencil, Prismacolor color pencil. Okay, so I'll just, uh, let me color a couple more little stars and maybe a couple of these little bubble things here. Uh, while anybody has any questions. I'm, do, I'm doing this video because I always get asked the same questions, and I understand that not everybody's at every show, so they don't uh, necessarily uh, know what I'm using if I don't show it each time, which I do try to do. Anytime I do a color book page or anything, I do try to tell you what I'm using as I go. But um, in case anybody missed it, that's why I'm gonna I'm kind of doing this show to uh, like a show and tell of what kind of products I use. All right. So let me see if there's anybody else that I need to say good morning to. Yeah, and and your gel pens will the last you know depending on the quality of the quality of the brand that you buy. I can't recommend any specific brand. You know, I mean, I do have a silver, a gold, and the Uniball. Let me see. The Signal Uniball. Let's see if I can have it here. Yeah. You can buy the silver and the gold of this right here. Um, Signo, uh No, so this is the, sorry, Pentel. Let me, let me, wait. Back up. Beep, beep, beep. Let me get my wife. The... Well, I have the the white the white one in the Signo Uni, Uni. These are the the silver and gold are in the Pentel Sunburst gel, and you can buy the silver and gold in a set. At I get them at Hobby Lobby. You can probably get them at Amazon anywhere. But they're the Pentel Sunburst 
silver and gold. I used to have the, the white ones. I don't even know if they make anymore. I love the white ones, but I can't ever find the Pentel Sunburst in white. So, um, do you mind if we use your acrylic paint? I, I don't care if you use paint your acrylic background. I mean, that's why I'm showing you, Marie, so that you know different techniques to use. I'm not following the question. Um, yeah, you like these two. So anyway, they used to have a white one, and they and they sold it at uh, Staples. The white one, the Pentel Sunburst White Gel Pen, and then they stopped selling it, and then they couldn't even get it online. Now, you know, who knows now? Maybe they got it back, or this was some months ago, maybe a year or two ago even. And uh, but the, I buy these Pentel Sunburst Gel Silver and Gold in a pack of. You know, it comes in a set. A silver and a gold in one pack and they're not very expensive like four dollars for the two pens and you can use a coupon <laughs> so you can get you know 40 or 50 percent off a set so you're not even paying more than a dollar and they these are just really really good um the other is the, the white one that i like and i gave my main i gave dug it out and gave it to cam this weekend so let me see if i can find another ah here we go uh, well, this is a this is a sunburst one. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for the white one of these. Is this one. Give us some blue. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. So, all right. Here's the other two. All right. So this one is the Signo. The un is it the Uniball Signo? No, this isn't it. Hang on. It's a different brand. I've got every brand. Trust me, I have every brand of white pen you could ever ma imagine. So I'm looking for, well, let me show you here. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried every white pen you could ever imagine. All right, so the U the Signo, um, Uniball Signo white gel pen, everybody swears by these, okay? And I use them for years and years. But for the, uh, but for the, they, and people have said, and this, again, this is years ago, that the ones that have the yellow Japanese writing on them work better than the ones that don't. I don't know about that. I haven't bought any of these for a long time. But a lot of people swear by the Signo Uniball, um, or Uni, is it, what's it called? Yeah, Uniball Signo um, white gel pen. I have found, though, that the Jelly Roll white works doesn't skip or um clog as easily as these do now again it's depending on how much you use it where you you know there's probably a lot of variables i just found that this doesn't skip or clog as easily as this one does that being said <laughs> these days i have mostly been using for any kind of white highlight or white areas the uni posca okay the posca pens these are paint pens but they're not your um they're not your the kind that with the oil based like the oily based old kind of like sharpie um glossy uh paint pens that you know you really had to really work at getting them to work and they're constantly clogging these i'm telling you the posca paint pens are awesome now <laughs> they're just pure white you never have a problem with them i like using them for highlights and eyes they don't clog and uh this one apparently they even have a thinner one this is a 0 0.7 millimeter and gene was saying that they even have a thinner one this is plenty thin for me but they apparently even have a thinner one. Yeah, these, and you can, I get them at Jet Pins. You can get them on Amazon, wherever, because this is the only color I buy. <laughs> so if you want sets of them, you can buy these in, uh, I think, three size, three different tip sizes. I just get the 0 0.7 in white. It's the only Posca I've ever used is the white. So, Jean uses them, yeah, they're hi, like high flow acrylics in a marker, is how Jean's describing it. So, I buy it just for the white, 
because I don't really paint or use them. Jean uses them in her art journal, and I think they'll go over anything, won't they, Jean? Won't they just, like, go over anything? Uh, again, I just use it for, like, a little bit of highlight in an eye or on a lip or something like that is really all I use them for. So they last a long time. Um, yeah, she said that this is the medium tip. They have the fine point. And although this is a very fine, fine point. Well, I can't zoom in. I mean, I'm not zoomed in to focus on that. But it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I, I can do stars with it or whatever. And speaking of stars or foam or any kind of white splats, somebody also asked me about how to do snowflakes. All right, let's just say I wanted this, uh, and I, I've only done this much on the, on this moth right here. You can only see that's as far as I've gone. But let's just say I wanted this to have stars or snow or white foam from water. How I do that, if you don't, if it's just a tiny area, you can just do, you know, a few little dots. You know, if that's all the area you're going to uh, do that with. But if I want a big area, let me go to this the blue thing over here. I just, uh, where is the, I will just, here, I will water down, just put some white paint, and I, my palettes, all they are is just coffee lids, and then when they're dry, <laughs> I just pile up the paint. Uh, just a little bit of white paint, water it down, and I don't use a toothbrush or any of that. I found that for me, it goes everywhere when I try to do that. I just use a soft brush like this and get it wet and just kind of tap it like this. I just tap, 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 tap like this. This is how I do. I just tap it down. Now, don't tap it like this toward you. <laughs> you got to tap it down <laughs> facing wherever. And wherever you tap it down, then you'll get these kind of splatters like this. Okay. And sorry, guys, it is flashing out a little bit. Now it's getting extra bright in here with the sun. But I think y'all are getting the eye. I think you can still see and get the idea. Okay. Oh, and speaking of brushes, people ask me what kind of brushes I use. I have my brushes in by usually by size in different jars. <clears throat> I have four jars right here and a spinny rack here for the well, even the larger ones. Okay. All my brushes, now I'm gonna say all that you see here are just cheap acrylic sets and a couple there's a couple of individual ones i paid a little bit more with for my little bitty one and my liner there's a couple but for the most part these all come in acrylic sets at the craft store whether it's an artist loft brand or just whatever brand um, and usually you can get them like a, a couple of large a couple of mediums and a couple of smalls in like a pack for like five to eight dollars sometimes twelve if there's a lot in there and I always use a coupon so let's just say the pack cost you get ten brushes for twelve dollars or eight dollars use a coupon get them for four or five for a whole mess of them now there I would not recommend if you're doing fine art like um, watercolors where you need nice mop brushes and uh, sable hair or anything like that for your watercolors. These, you know, these are just my craft brushes. I have a whole roll set of nice oil painting uh, brushes that I don't really oil paint anymore. I have them separate because I don't want to gump them up uh, with acrylic paint. I have them, you know, they're more expensive brushes and I have them set aside. Uh, but for just using my acrylic paint and washes and backgrounds, these are the brushes I use. Let me put this in. And I usually just pick out, what I've done is I've separated them by size. So here's my very tiny ones. Okay, here's one step up from that size. And then here's my bigger flats and um, angle brushes and this one. And then this one has one step up from that. And then the other one has lot, lots of large ones. Um, so this is just how I separate them for ease for me. Uh, Mike, what? Please, what? Um, okay, hang on. Sound, sound. Okay, sound messed up. All right, let me fix it. 
Hang on, guys. I'm going to fix the sound. Okay, that should have fixed it. Sometimes the sound goes wonky and you just have to switch mics. So that should have been it. Uh, Pixie Cora, on the uh, coupons, like for instance with Michael's coupons, I get them on my phone because I've signed up. Um, well, same thing for Hobby Lobby. If you follow them on your phone or uh, if you follow them in your email or your app, I should say. Well, it's not even an app. You can just go online, take your phone, go to Hobby Lobby, type in Hobby Lobby, and a 40% coupon is right there. Same thing for Michaels. Although I'm, I'm one of their reward member things, just what makes that easiest is I get them in the mail, the little, the physical snail mail, I'll get coupons, or I'll get them in the newspaper, but you can always get them on your phone. You can always get them on the phone. Okay, so yeah, so that's what I use. Now, occasionally for a liner brush, I have a few more expensive liner brushes, and I can find them because they're the bigger sizes here. So, for instance, these, let me pull these out. These are Master Touch brand, and they're probably about $5 a brush. <clears throat> these are probably about $5 a brush. Again, I'll use a coupon or wait till the brushes are on sale for 40%. And I like them because, let me wet down some of the long hair ones here so you can see. You can buy all different kinds of liner or rigger, whichever one you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the Ustream, the, the sound jumps. And so all I have to do is change the mic and change it back. Okay, so when you see me like going through my hand like this, when I put the white paint and water it down and go through my hand, it's because I can feel how much paint is on my brush when I'm doing lining, liner, uh, like hair, long streaky hair, or anything that just needs a long liner. But these are called the Master Touch brand. This is uh, EX Liner. They're just different. This one's just called Liner. This one is called, that's the same as this one. So you can see, you can get these nice long liner brushes. And I like these. I like the handles of them. I like because they're like heavy, uh, not heavier, but they're thicker handles. So it just makes it easier for me. I mean, I just like them. I just like this, you know, brand. But they have all different kinds too. Like here's a tiny, tiny little one. Um, you know, I've just got different sizes of little bitty, little bitty ones. So, but I don't have, you know, for the most part, it's just the cheap acrylic uh, paint brushes that you buy in sets of, you know, like here, this, the, all these orange ones came in a set. Here's one with the blue ones. I would recommend, though, if you do buy any kind of sets, especially if you use them a lot, like I use my brushes literally every single day. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <you'd be> like, <laughs> I use my brushes all the time. And Darcy, it was funny when she came up, she goes, Dee, I've never seen brushes so clean as yours. Well, a couple things. One, after I use them, they never sit in water and they never sit in paint. I have, I'll show you where my, uh, <laughs> I'll show you where my uh, mess comes in. Look at my, uh, this is my water thing. I can't tilt it, but trust me, see how dirty that is? That's what it is on the sides. So how I uh, keep clean my my keep my brushes so clean is after I use when you'll hear me and I'll have a, let's put this one back in here you'll hear me I have a paper towel this is what it sits like right at my elbow well a little farther than my elbow but it's got two slots and they're they're dirty now because I've been using them this morning but what I'll do is after I use a brush so there's two slots you can have a clean side and a dirty side so I'll you'll hear me do this. So I'm cleaning and cleaning my brush, okay? Then I'll come over here to the clean water and rinse. Then I come down here and I do this. And I, and I flatten out my brushes, and then they go back in the jar. Or I change color, whatever. So I'm constantly cleaning my brushes, and I try, I try to change this out every day. Um, so that sits right next to me. So I'm constantly cleaning my brushes and flattening them out no matter what size I use. You know, the tiniest ones. Now, they'll, they'll start to flare. Look at some of my brushes, how bad they look. You know, they'll get, they'll get, uh, 
jacked up, if you will. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say about the handles. It, it's best if you can get the plastic handles, especially if you are one to ever be, uh, uh, um, if you leave your brushes in water for any length of time, if you have a wood brush, wood handle, and if you leave that in water, even for an hour, the wood's going to start peeling off. Okay, you're going to, you know, and depending on what, how of expensive of a brand, if they're not varnished, like my uh, liner brushes here all have a nice coat of varnish on them. <clears throat> they, they're varnished pretty well, but if your paint brushes are not varnished and you're just buying cheap craft brushes in these sets like I'm, I do, if you buy the wood ones, they're going to start, that that's going to start peeling. Look, look, see? Look, there's a perfect example. That just popped off right there. That little bit of paint. See? They're going to start peeling off. So you want, if you can, try to buy the plastic handle ones because the wood is not going to chip off. All right? And I have found that they're really, maybe you might pay a dollar more for a pack of these. You might pay $10 for eight of these. And you might pay $6 for a pack of these. I, you spend the extra couple dollars to get the plastic handles. And I'm not recommending any kind of brand. I don't, I'll buy whatever, you know, this might be a Michaels brand. I don't even know. It's a Craft Smart. That may be, that might be the, you know, I know a Michaels has a couple. They have Craft Smart. They have their, uh, um, uh, what's their brand called? Anyway, uh, I, I don't care what the brand is. I look at the, if it's a plastic handle, and the ang I, I like a lot of angle brushes. That's my favorite kind of brush to use. But whatever, you can buy a set. You know, you can buy a whole bunch. You can buy a set of tiny ones, okay? You can buy a set of, you know, flats. You can buy a set of the larger ones, like here. This one's why I haven't even ever used this one. Um, so, and they come in different colors. Here's a white. This one is the, that's a Craft Smart brand too. It's just a different kind of set. But it just says acrylic. It just says acrylic brushes on it. They're not anything special and they're not expensive. Because I use them so much, I'm rough on them. I'm constantly, you know, you hear me banging in the water and cleaning them. I do keep them clean, but I don't worry about them because they're inexpensive craft acrylic, whether they're uh, black um, brushes or the white acrylic ones. Either one. I'll buy whichever one, you know. So those are the brushes I use. Again, no fancy. They're not anything fancy except those liner ones. Um, my more expensive brushes. Let's, let me get my thing here to pull back the light. Uh, my expensive um, oil, paint, oil painting brushes I keep in a roll. So my more expensive brushes they're going to be in in here and I don't use these for my acrylic paint okay so and and I really don't even use these anymore very rarely because I don't do oil painting or professional watercolor for that matter so that's on the brush issue every time I place an order with Blick or Jerry do you buy a few brushes yeah and they always have them on sale you can get those like the master touch ones those liner brushes that I say are about five or six dollars normally wait for them to go on sale for 40 percent off I mean at least once every other month Hobby Lobby and Michaels will have their brushes 40 percent off and that's usually true with all their products it rotates you know, one week they'll have sketchbooks 40% off. And that's without a coupon. That's not even including, I mean, you can't use, you can't use a coupon and the 40% off. But what I'm saying is every, every week they rotate the products that they have on sale for 30 or 40% off. So you can always get something on sale. Do you use the yellow ones too? Or are they different? The yellow what? The, oh, you mean the yellow bristles? Um, I it doesn't seem like I buy those as often, but I do have I have those too. You know, the, some, they'll come in sets like this. I, it doesn't really matter to me I, if it says acrylic on the package. They're going to be you know synthetic for the most part, and they just hold up well. You know, I mean, some I mean I don't even know what kind of hair some of these are, guys. I don't even know that it says what kind of hair. If it is, in fact, even real hair. 
not it's not like your sables and things that you use you know for your uh, more expensive brushes I don't buy those for this for color books or any kind of acrylic painting like this okay all right so let's see now what else haven't I covered as far as products y'all have any questions I want to get a sip of coffee real quick my coffee's getting cold over here it's got a ring around it it's been sitting here <laughs> I haven't taken the first sip since we started an hour ago mm -hmm. Um, how, okay, let me say how I usually keep my pencil. Um, I did, for a while I was just throwing all my pencils back in. This is a silverware tray, plastic silverware, you know, for your silverware drawer, you know. Um, you can get them for a dollar at a Walmart or dollar store. And you could get multiples. I just have the one because I just found that I really got, I wanted this one just for flesh tones, for the most part, flesh tones. And because uh, that's what I do the most of, other than color book pages here, um, I use my color pencils for my pet portraits and my people portraits. So I, I there for a while though, I was throwing everything in here. But a couple, a few days, maybe a week ago, I did go through and re, you know, put my pencils back together. And so this is how I, uh, keep my pencils. I rubber band them. Okay, like here's my turquoise ones. Here's my uh, greens. And what I do is I put all my pencils in uh, bundles by color. And if you put some rubber bands around them, and then you let's just say you want a green, you can pick up this bundle. It's a lot easier than doing this. Okay, it's a lot easier than digging through even a small tray. It's a lot easier to pick up a bundle and do this and just go like that. And you can see every pencil you got. Then you can pull out the pencil you want to use. And if you're lazy, you can throw it in the tray like I did for a long time. <laughs> or you can put it back and just slip it in under the band. So this is how I keep the bulk. The bulk of my pencils are all, my Prismacolors, are all in bundles like this. like this all these then sit in another sit in a like a breakfast tray on my uh, side table over here and uh, so if I want to take all of them to the another room I can just pick up the whole tray and take all these with me but if I'm just sitting here and they're sitting in the tray next to me I can just pick up the bundle I need here's my purples my uh, grays and uh, green green grays you know pinks and lavenders uh, blue grays, uh, my turquoise. There, I keep my turquoise a little separate from the greens or the blues because they don't really fit in either one when I'm looking for a color. I don't like going, well, let's see, did I put my turquoises in the green or the blue? So they have their own little rubber band. So this is how, yes, I do have a couple pencil extenders uh, and I do use my pencils down to nubs. Here's one. And you can get, this is just a general, general brand one, or National uh, national Art or General, if they're the same company. Um, I, I'll use them if, it really, if I really need to, but for the most part, I'll even hold them when they're this small. I'll even hold them when they're this small. But yeah, you can get down to, you know. And you can get these in metal. You can get them, a Derwent has a nice set with a silver metal and a black metal for, I think, two different sizes in them and I, I, I buy them a lot and I end up giving them away either to the kids or whatever or you know um, okay all right Scooby girl so um, and I do keep my nubs when they get down you know to like half of this size then I put them in I'll put them in a, I'll put them in a jar like this and keep them uh, Cam, <laughs> um, when he first started using color pencils years ago, uh, I gave him a whole bag, I mean like a bag, a big, you know, plastic gallon Ziploc bag full of old barrel, the old ba barrel Prismacolor nubs that were all small, let's see, how small, they were probably this or smaller. He hoards those little barrel nubs. <laughs> like they're gold and uh, so anyway and uh, yeah so this is how I keep my pencils 
in just bundles like this. So whenever I need a color, I can just pick up that bundle. Yeah, let me see. Where's my phone? Let me, let me see if I have that picture. I've shown the picture before. but And then all my flesh tones are here because I'm constantly using my flesh tones. So I just put them in this tray. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go down here. It's been a couple weeks. So let me scroll back. going to show you all a picture of something that's really cute. I've shown it here before, but here it is. So Cam has a jar about this tall. Well, it's about this tall, about that big around, and he keeps his pencil shavings in it. <laughs> he keeps his pencil shavings in a jar because he thinks it looks cool to have all those wood shavings. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Anyway, okay, so let me see if there's any questions. Yeah, they're pencil extenders. Yeah, and you can get them in, like I said, there's some, Derwin has a nice set. Um, I'm thinking it's like 10 to $12 for the set of two uh, silver and black metal ones, and they're heavy. So it just depends, I guess, on what you like to hold in your hand. They're heavier than just that little wood one that you can get, you know, that one's nothing. You know, they come in sets with the pencils and anyway all right so let me check if there's any comments and yeah i'm just showing you guys the things that i use and do there's you know thousands and not millions of people on uh youtube to find can you use your show? well there would i'm sure they would catch on fire Carrie I would not that you'd want to but I'm sure <laughs> uh, so okay so I'm just trying to think I got all kinds of markers and stuff all over me with all this demoing let's see so that was in the Imagimorphia and Anamorphia these are the two that I, I work um I work um like little bits here and there I don't rarely finish a whole page all at once I um, unless I'm doing a special thing here where we're, we'll go through multiple parts all right so I'm gonna wait just another second to see if you all have any more questions on the the supplies that I use for my color books uh, I'm not I haven't gone through the supplies I use for my collage if y'all want me to tell y'all a little bit about that I can it, all in the same segment maybe I should um, show your pencil oh my pencil sharpeners okay i've got every pencil sharpener portable pencil sharpener probably ever made <laughs> i don't use electric pencil sharpener it just meh, grinds them down to nothing plus uh electric pencil sharpener is not portable enough for me to take around the house or different rooms or anywhere these are my three favorite pencil sharpeners the little these a few companies make these they're just the little metal ones the little silver metal ones and you can also get these with the um double side you know double uh like this they look like this and they're metal so this one my little bullet one the little brass br um brass bullet one is what it's called barrel i think it's a barrel i think it's called a barrel and you can get these at blick michaels you know wherever and then the other one is the Coom woodcutter one because again I got I like this one because it has the two sizes and I just keep a little porcelain thing here so I can sharpen on my desk rather than leaning over the trash can next to me every time I'm not bending and bending and bending over the trash can I just keep it right here then when it gets full I, I don't save my shavings like Cam does then I can just dump that out and start over like that so this just sits next to me um, but trust me, there are millions of little sharpeners. You just got to find these. I just found that metal. Metal is the best one for me. That's what I found. And now I know that there's some people out there that swear by their uh, special um, electric ones. It, that's just too much trouble for me. Yeah, I don't, I can't, you know, unplug or even if it's a battery operator. I'm not going to carry around a big electric sharpener room to room you know 
Um, okay, so thank you though for that question on the on the um, pencil sharpeners. Um, I'm trying to think to make sure there's anything else on if there's anything else on the products that I use for color pencil. Okay, or color books. That's pretty much all I use. If there's anything else, I mean, I may have do something special, uh, but I can't think of anything right now. That's pretty much it as far as the paints, the pens, the markers, the pencils, and all that that I use in my color booking. Now, for collage, I'll just take a quick minute to show tell you that. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's other ones out there. Anonymous, I don't know who Anonymous is. I'm sure there's some other ones out there. Uh, I, these just work fine for me. If you find something that works better for you, yeah, go for it. I mean, you know, this is not a full-on only, this is the only products you can use, and these are, you know, it's it's just what I use. That's kind of what I'm trying to cover here. It's just what I use. All right, so now in my collage, and I think I'm going to have to refocus that. Let me grab one of my... I'm, and, I'm, and most of you already pretty much know, I'll just do a quick, you know, talk about that. In my collage, okay, let me back up a little close there now. Hang on, guys, let me refocus. Let's refocus, refocus. So in my collage... I'll tell you all the products that I use real quick. Oh, erasers. Um, I really don't erase much in my color books, but if I have to, I will use, or, or I should say with color pencil, if I have to erase color pencil. Now, this is not covering any kind of drawing or sketching pencils. I'm not covering that right now. I, I have done a show on my pencils before. But if I have to erase anything in uh, color pencil, where is it? Where is my hair? I'll use the Ticon Dixon Ticonderoga Black. It's called the Black because it has a black eraser and a black barrel. Now, there, Dixon Ticonderoga has a yellow, your, just your everyday number two school pencil. Well, this is just an, an HB number two school pencil, too. The only reason I like these and buy these in boxes, like, you know, you can get your, like, in school supplies, you know, when school, school go, you know, school starts again. You can get 12 or 10 in a box. I don't remember how come come in a box. But the only reason I buy these, I really never use the pencil. I buy them for the eraser. I do know that you can buy black erasers that Prismacolor and other people make. I just like the feel of a little, you know, pencil, you know, a little pencil eraser. When I want to erase something small, I'll just use this. So these are the, this is the only, uh, uh, really the only eraser I have found that works decently on my Prismacolor pencils. Not saying it's the only one. I'm sure there's others out there I've never even heard of. This is just what works for me. <laughs> there's always someone going, no, no, there's this and there's that. Okay, okay, don't email me. Anyway, so that's <laughs> that's what I use because it's an excellent eraser for a color pencil. Okay, that's it as far as um, color pencil. Now, if I'm sketching and drawing, the only kind of erasers I like are white, the white plastic ones. Like, I love sketching with these. If I have to use a pencil, just a graphite pencil, I like my little um, disposable, you know, because they're tiny. I don't have to sharpen them. But I don't use the red rubber eraser. Now, I have used this, but I, I won't tell you what. It's not, it's not to erase a sketch. But I will cover up those with the white, these right here, these are the, to me the best for uh, erasing on uh, graphite or even the blue lead in my uh, Graph Gear 1000. So, and this even comes with the white, white rubber eraser. But I don't use it because, here's why I don't use this eraser, <laughs> because if I set this little cap down somewhere, it will. I know. I just know. I, I would lose it. So I just don't use that <laughs> for erasing. I'll just pick up this one. Or Janet sent me and oh, the, yeah. Let me ask answer that because I have had people ask me that. What's that eraser that Janet sent you? Let me see. I had it right here. It's the Tombow Mono. Here it is. 
the Tombow Mono Zero eraser, and it's a tiny, it just, it clicks down just like your pencils do, and it's a tiny, tiny little eraser. So I like that for little areas too. So there's, there's my uh, erasers. Did I cover everything, guys? I think I covered everything. All right, so that's for uh, color pencil and color book. And then for uh, collage, I'm not going to do any demoing, but I'm just going to tell you what I use real quick. And then we'll start a segment where we actually do something. <laughs> but I just wanted to do, if you're just joining us now, this is like a product review of what I use. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. No one's paying me to tell you that these are my products that I use. These are just the products I use. Hey, Vicki up there. I just now saw you. So in my collage, what I do is I use the same paint, Americana Craft Acrylic Paint. All the paint you see, that's what it is. You can see this is <laughs> how I use it, just in little coffee lid trays. And that's the paint I use. As far as images I'll use, I'll use uh, calendars, old books, magazines, whatever. Let me get over here to a couple of pages that are done. And I know it sounds really like they really stuck together, but trust me, they don't. It just sounds like it. But... Um, so this is just, all this is, is Americana paint and images, uh, you know, uh, magazine, calendar, whatever. And then I paint in whatever else I want to paint in. These happen to be varnished. The varnish I use is Delta Ceram Coat Interior Exterior Gloss. Okay, I use the gloss uh, to varnish my journal pages or my art cards. Which let me grab an art card here, show you an art card. Same process. The same process that I do my art cards, the same process in my art journal, is the same that I do in my posters. Um, well, I won't get a poster. I got a couple of posters rolled up up there. But it's all the same process. Okay. How I glue my images down is with golden matte medium golden matte medium here's a small jar of it just to show you <clears throat> this is what it looks like and you can buy different size jars like this okay but i just want to show you what it looks like because somebody did ask me the other day is it fluid or is it you know and and they asked different names and i said no it just says golden matte medium and just just means non-shiny you can get golden gloss medium. This is matte. That means non-shiny. This is what I use to glue all my images down. And then I do the paint. And I paint in it. All this is paint. All this is paint. Paint. Stars. Planets. Paint. You know, like that. And then after that, I will... Now, this one's not been varnished yet. So you can just see this one's not varnished. Okay, so I've got one more here. And I usually do these on stream for the most part. My art journal pages, I do these on stream. I usually do my posters, the animal big posters, which I haven't done for a while because those take a while. And I need to do a different, you know, filming setup to do a, a full on big poster. Um, but it's all the same, it's the same products, the same paints the same matte medium, the same everything. And then if there is something like, let's just say I wanted to glue a little extra something on there. Now, before you varnish, once you varnish it, you've sealed it all up, okay? Um, but like, just say I wanted to glue a little something else on, I'll just use my Eileen's Tacky Glue, okay? But for the overall glue down of everything, I use my golden matte medium. And if you see me do my process, you know why I love this. Because if you're going to be painting on top of it and wiping things out and blending things in, if you don't have this on there, it's not going to it's not going to be the same. I'm not saying it's impossible to do my technique without it, but it you're going to be fighting it. You're going to be fighting drying paint. It's not going to wipe away. It's not going to blend. 
golden matte medium. People have asked me, do you ever use um, Mod Podge? No, I don't use Mod Podge. This is the only thing I use. And then I seal it with the Delta Saran coat. So, and the same thing with this cover. This cover has been done the same way. And it's got the same, it's got two coats of varnish because I wanted it a little thicker varnish because it's the cover and I wanted it more. So you can see, see how shiny that is? So yeah. Okay, so any more questions? Yes, the gel medium is thicker. This is just the matte medium. It's not the gel. The gel, this is liquidy. It's very liquidy. It's like liquidy. <laughs> Whereas the gel is like almost like, um, you know, toothpaste-like consistency. It's, it's a gel. Um, yeah, YooHoo, I will use my YooHoo glue sticks. Um, the only time I'll use a YooHoo glue stick in my collage is like if I just want to tack something down to hold it till I get back to it. So, for instance, like if I just wanted to, I don't even know if I have any bits in here. Do I have a collage bit in here? No, I don't. If I just wanted to tack something down on a page, I would just, you know, put a little bit of YooHoo glue on the back and just tack it down to hold it in place. But I don't use this to glue things down. Okay, you know, I mean, there may be the occasion where I've done it just for convenience for a minute. Uh, but it's not what I use to glue things down. This is what I use to glue everything down. Uh, now, what I'll tell you what, these, these are my favorite glue sticks. And somebody asked me about that. I love my YooHoo glue sticks. I used to be purple, now I went to blue. I don't know if there was some kind of controversy over the purple dye or what. Uh, but anyway, and it doesn't matter to me. If it's clear, purple, or blue, it all works the same. However, what's nice about the blue or purple is you can see it. You can see where you've put something down. It does dry clear, but when you're gluing something, you can see it. What this is good for is, um, let's say I want to cover, let's just get something here. Let's just say I wanted to cover a, um, say a composition book. Let me grab that. Let's say I wanted to cover this composition book with scrapbook paper or whatever kind of paper. This is excellent for doing that because it won't, um, it doesn't wrinkle. Now, I will, this is still my favorite. <laughs> this is still my favorite if I'm going to glue things together, especially uh, like on a heavy card stock on, a, uh, what do you call it, a chipboard. As long as you smooth this out, as long as you take your glue and um, smooth it all out, don't leave it all lumpy and bumpy because that will leave the lumps and bumps in whatever you're covering, then I, I love my uh, tacky glue. But if you're doing especially thinner papers, this won't leave any bumps. The YooHoo enabler, yes. This won't leave any lumps and bumps as long as you, you know, don't grind it down and, you know, make it all lumpy. But if you cover something with this and put it on your paper as well, I always recommend doing that no matter what you're doing, what you're gluing. And I do it whether I'm using matte medium, a YooHoo, or Eileen's Tacky. I put the glue on both things, the, the paper and the substrate. Um, but I love my I love my YooHoo for like glue books or you know your general like not heavy project where you're going to use it all. I mean it it holds. Trust me, it's my favorite. It's my favorite glue stick is a YooHoo. Okay, so I'm trying to think of anything else I might cover while we're doing the product chat. I'm just kind of looking around, seeing what that might entail um, the brushes I use for my matte medium my golden uh, are usually when my brushes when my regular paint brushes go too too uh, old or too crusty you know I don't really let them get crusty because I clean them all the time but uh, if they start getting really, you know, flared out and used up, then they get turned into my glue brushes. 
that's what you have getting ready to talk about the glue brushes. So what I'll, the, these brushes will end up being glue brushes. And they're the only brushes that I leave in water. I have a big coffee jar uh, or a peanut jar. You know, I switch it out every few months. Uh, and I keep it full of water. Okay, full of water. And they, those brushes stay in the water all the time. So that when I want to use something, when I want to glue something, I just pull them out, dry them off on a paper towel, and glue. And then, but I don't use them for paint. I don't use them for anything else but the glue. Then when I'm done gluing, they go back in the water. Now, eventually, they get really gunked up, and I'll throw those away and replace it with another one. Uh, and I usually have about five to ten glue brushes of different sizes in the water and I switch the water out every you know couple months or whatever and uh, yeah so that's the only brushes I let sit in water all right so now for me I do not like bristle brushes Jean that's just me bristle brushes uh, I know there's a place for them in, in certain kind of painting techniques, but for me, bristle brushes, you know, like the horse hair. I don't even know if I have one here to show you. I might have one. Okay, here's one. I, it's probably the only one I have. Uh, I do not like these. I don't like those stiff bristle brushes, and here's why. Number one reason is they leave brush marks in your acrylic paint. They'll, they will leave brush marks in your paint. They're like very stiff. They're just called, they're called bristle brushes, and that's exactly what they are. They're like bristly. It's almost, you know, that's just the best description. But I have found that they always leave brush marks in your paint, okay? So I, I never use these. You know, I can't say ever, never, never, but yeah, so I don't use bristle. Oh, you use them for glue brushes. Okay, well, for the same thing, though, Jean, even if I use them, let's say I use the bristle brushes with my golden matte medium, it's going to make brush marks in my golden matte medium. It's going to leave brush marks. So then when I dry my collage, I'll be drying brush marks in there. So then when I go to work with paint, whether it's with my finger, a brush, or a baby wipe, and I go to work the paint into the piece, I'm, I'm, there's brush marks there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't use them. I don't use them because of that. Just because of that. They leave brush marks in anything. Yeah. So, well, we've been going about an hour and a half. So I'm going to wait and see if there's any more questions. I do have a couple of books and a couple of Happy Meal things to show you in the next segment. But I wanted this just to be a, a, an hour, hour and a half on just the products that I use for color books, um, you know, and w whatever others, you know, the paints and the, and the pencils, and then a little bit on the collage materials I use. Because people always ask me these same things, and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can smooth things out. I mean, I, I, I do mash everything down with the card as well, Jean, in my map, in when I uh, do collaging, but that's not even so much for the, the brush, you know, that's to smash down the collage elements, the paper collage elements, the calendar pages or the book pages or whatever. That's why I use the card, is to get any wrinkles, any wrinkles out of your um, paper. Yeah. 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 And Jean, now she's been using her silicone brushes. They're like the brushes that I, th I thought they were uh, initially made for two things. One, for clay work. They're silicone tips. Let's see. I got some here. Um, I got different sizes and different kinds. Uh, I'm not sure if they were originally made for clay and, uh, you know, do working in clay but they wipe away paint, and maybe it's for both. Um, I don't really use them. Uh, I've used, I did used to use them in my polymer clay. I never really, I didn't get into poly. I mean, I let me say this: I, I did it for a couple of years and made jewelry and cabochons and kind of things with clay. But it wasn't like my love. It wasn't my passion. But I did it for a while. Uh, anyway, that's when I would use these. I'd use them for uh, polymer clay you know, sculpting-like, uh, but I know that they're good for wiping away paint. For instance, let me just give you all a little demo here. Let's see. Let's go on. Here's, let me go on the back of this calendar here. Uh, let me show you how nicely they work. 
You just put a little dab of paint here. All right, so you can take your um, silicone or rub they're like rubbery tips and see how it wipes away the paint. So a lot of uh, painters use them to do that. See, let me show you again. You can you can make all kinds of designs. See, you can essentially write write in paint with them. I just don't my techniques. I don't really do anything like that. Oh, then the other thing that I do use, especially in collage, are my Huggy Baby Wipes. They're just the natural care Huggy Baby Wipes. And I buy, if depending on which is cheaper, sometimes the box is cheaper than the refills. But they're just Huggies Baby Wipes, and that's the only baby wipes I use. They're magic. They're magic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the two-inch silicone brush. Yeah, I do have, um, yeah, I got some of these, too. Some of these, these paint, oh, I forgot what they're called. Catalyst wedge, and it's essentially the same thing. You can, you know, smash your glue down with it or smear your paint or pick paint up. You know, I just don't use them, you know. I just find that I don't really use them. I bought a couple just to play with. They sit here, and I don't use them. So, oh, the other thing is the craft scrubby. The craft scrubby, <laughs> which I did not have for years and years. <laughs> and everybody goes, you need a craft scrubby. It'll get the gel, uh, the, I mean, the matte medium off your hands. Because that's, that's a tricky business there, is getting the matte medium off your hands, especially if you've got fingernail polish on. Um, and, you're, and you do a lot of matte medium and collaging with the matte medium. I'm getting some of the marker off my hand now. Um, it, it, it's, it's almost impossible to get out without a uh, fingernail polish remover. And that's how I used to get the matte medium off my hands. Because it would cross stuff and dry. I'd sit here for hours and hours and hours and collage and matte medium. And that would literally have, you know, a thick coat of matte medium on my hands. I, I mean, I would try to, you know, keep as much off as I can with baby wipes. But it still dries around your nails. And the only way I could get it off was with fingernail polish remover. And a lot of scrubbing. Well... Yes. This thing weighs nothing. I mean, you can barely feel it in your hand. And, you know, you think of like a pumice stone. This is more like styrofoam. But I don't think styrofoam would do what this does. This, if you get it under your water, uh, warm water and your matte medium, and you can, it doesn't cut your skin. It does not hurt you at all. Look, I'm rubbing really hard. It's not even scratching me. It's a miracle. It really is. <laughs> These little scrap scrubbies. So if you get it under water and you scrub, you can get all your matte medium off. Now I can't guarantee you're going to get it off of all your nail polish. That's going to a lot might depend on the kind of nail polish you have. But it'll get it off all your skin. Love this, the craft scrubby. Yes, I will be a craft scrubby. Um, it is total magic. <laughs> Everybody's going it's magic. Judy Hootie says the nail buffers are almost the exact same thing as the craft scrubby, but cheaper. Well, but they're not this big, are they? I don't know. I don't use, I'm not much of a nail girl. I mean, I put the nail polish on. It gets crusty throughout the day or a couple of days. I take it off and I put a new color on. That's the extent of my nails. I don't use any kind of acrylic nails or anything. I like my nails short because of all the work I do. I do not let my nails really get past the edge of my fingers because they get in my way. Nails get in my way of my art. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. Um, I mean, there's tons of other supplies that I do use. You've seen a tour of my room. Uh, but those are the essentials. And a spritzer of water. These little, uh, a little bottle, you know, like this. So if you have your paint water is dirty and the, where you clean your brushes, you can, you want something like this where you can squirt out clean water. Uh, that's, that is important. Um, so, yeah. That was the best $5 you ever spent. Yeah, and see, Gene, I got mine on, I got mine on clearance for two. That was the clearance department for two. Okay, so. Yeah, any more quick questions? The big ones are kind of like pumice stones. Yeah. Pumice stones are rough. Yeah, the scrubby's not rough. That's the thing. The scrubbies are not rough. It's almost like the, it's like the softest kind of styrofoam, but it doesn't flake off like styrofoam would. 
you know, if you try to rub something with styrofoam, you know, it's all falling apart. This doesn't. This doesn't fall apart. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to stop this video. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching this uh, product. I don't want to call it a product review or what I use. I guess I could just say some art supplies I use because, uh, and it's not all of them, but it's the main ones that I use for color booking, uh, portraits, the paints I use, and the collaging that I do, which seems to be the bulk of what I do these days. So, yeah. Yeah, wax paper. Wax papers, you need wax paper in between your pages so you don't glue them together when you're in an art journal. Or I'll put wax paper down on here uh, if I'm doing my art cards. My table is just covered with a roll of black craft paper. And there's probably about five to six roll. Uh, I don't take it off. I just put another layer on top and then tape it with uh, either duct tape or packing tape along the edges of the tables and it's just because it's a big roll and I can roll it out tape the edges when this gets too dirty now I gotta say though this has probably been painted three times uh, if it gets too uh, dirty I just take my black craft paint and I'll paint this out and I'm good to go again however that being said it's not good enough to do a color book page on it's it's crusty a little bit it's a little rough so you don't want to take an individual uh, drawing or art piece and put it on here I wouldn't and try to do any drawing because you're gonna pick up all these lumps and bumps but just for working on a book or you know put I like the black background so that's what this paper is all right um. What about the paper I use? Okay, for what, Busy Jill? For portraits? Um, be a little more specific. If you're talking about portraits, my portrait uh, paper is... Um, let me get one here. <clears throat> and different sizes. I have two different sizes, and you can also get it in gray. I like the tone tan, although I have used the tone gray, and I have used other color um, pastel type paper for specific, like especially if I'm doing baby portraits. If I'm doing a baby girl, it might have a pink paper. If I have a baby boy, unless otherwise specified, you know what I mean. But this is the main portrait paper. Oh, for collage, I'll collage on anything, Busy Jill. My, uh, that book I just showed, that was the Dilusions Journal with heavy cardstock, but I'll use any kind of cardstock because, like, for my instance, my art cards, <clears throat> by the time I have, um, uh, matte medium, paper, paint, and varnish, and I also paint the backs. This one's not painted, but I paint the backs. By the time I do all that, that, this little bit of, uh, maybe this was a 60 or 90 pound cardstock. Look how thick that is now because of all the layers on it. So, yeah, I'll just use any kind of cardstock, any kind of cardstock or art journal for that matter. And because by the time of all my layers, all the layers I used thickens it up. Okay, so that's the kind of paper I use. This is the paper I use for my portraits tone tan. So, for instance, let me just pull one out here. Like, here's um, here's Michelle, like here. So, here's one of my, uh, and again, it's going to want to flash out a little. Let me see if I can get the color back. Here we go. Let's see if we can get the color back. So, yeah. So, all my portraits are done on tan, tone tan paper. It's acrylic paint in, like, the hair and the clothing, but the faces are all color pencil. I might have a, like a little dot of paint in the eye for a highlight or something like that, but a base coat, I'll use base coats of acrylic paint on um, hair or clothing and then go over it with pencil, but all the faces and everything are done in color pencil. Um, and I've shown them. I'm not going to go through them now. I've got tons of them here of pencils. I will just show you one other one. 
and this was uh, Grandpa. It's going to flash out, guys, because it's so light. Uh, Grandpa from um, Gold Rush, who just passed away last, well, in Ma uh, March, I think. So anyway, all my uh, all my portraits are done on that. And sorry, guys, it's flashing out because the light's so bright right there. But and then here's a, here's like my pets that I do again. Again, it's wanting to oh, really wanting to flash out. Let me see if I can. There we go. Get them back. So I do pets and people. Okay. All right. Well, you see, I've done lots of uh, I've done lots of flips on those. I won't do that. But just speaking of the kind of paper I use, that's the kind I use. All right. Any more questions, real quick, guys? Kind of looking around and seeing if I miss talking about any particular supply. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and I'll be right back. We'll do some coloring or a project or something. I'm going to take a quick break and get some coffee. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be right back.